Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. December 31st, Alvin York. Five years after Alvin York committed his life to Jesus, the United States invited him to World War I. On the draft notice, York scrawled, Don't want to fight. He thought the war was wrong, but cynics thought his conscience was convenient. That's about where today's story begins. Afterward, York, who had a total of nine months of formal education in his life, went on to fight in the war. With 16 other soldiers, he engaged in a firefight with a much larger group of German soldiers who had a machine gun. Heroically, York disabled the machine gun. Nine American soldiers lay dead, but their surviving team members took 132 prisoners. On this date, in 1919, York was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. When he returned to the United States, people compared him to Davy Crockett and Abraham Lincoln, and movie makers tried to woo him. Companies tried to get him to endorse their products. But York only wanted to go home to Tennessee and resume his quiet life where he had been a Sunday school teacher and music leader. Upon his return, he wanted to find a way for the young people in his area to get an education. As it turns out, the cynics were wrong about Alvin York. The man who stands up for the Word of God honors the Creator of men. Alvin York explained, the Bible said, thou shalt not kill. That was so definite a child could understand it. But when his nation called him to war in 1917, York faced the greatest dilemma of his life. There were two reasons why I didn't want to go to war. My own experience told me that it wasn't right and the Bible was against it. York had admittedly lived a hard life of sin and promised he would never return to that life. A battle raged within him as his conscience told him war was wrong, but his beloved ancestors had fought and killed for his country. He readily identified with the Apostle Paul's struggle. In Romans chapter 7, verse 23, the Bible says, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. York wanted to be both a good Christian and a good American. Deep in prayer and contemplation, he trekked through the mountains of his native Pall Mall, Tennessee, and he spent hours reading his Bible. I just couldn't make up my mind that the Bible was wrong, and I couldn't make up my mind that Uncle Sam was right. I was a soul in doubt. He wrote his local draft board seeking conscientious objector status, but they refused. After numerous failed appeals and in consultation with his pastor, York reported for duty. During training, he continually informed his superiors of his objection to killing another person in any form. One of his commanders, Major Edward Buxton, also shared faith in Christ and this pleased York greatly. They talked together about their beliefs and Bible passages. Buxton enlightened York with several verses on just causes for war, such as Jesus' command to buy a sword. I believed the Lord was in that room, York said, and he left that room knowing Major Buxton would relieve him from any frontline duty if that's what York decided. The army issued York a pass home and he spent more time in the Bible and praying in the mountains. The Lord answered him on that mountain and met him in his burden. A peace came over York, and he returned for duty. In due time for his heroic actions on the battlefield, York became one of the most decorated soldiers of World War I and a national hero. God delivered York from his internal battle so that he could lead others to victory on a European battlefield. James chapter 5, verse 11 tells us, Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Be encouraged today that the Lord is looking for men to remain steadfast in His Word. The man who stands up for the Word of God 
honors the creator of men. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.